Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Amir Reza Nadripur from the Institute of High Voltage and High Current School of Electric Car Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. It's my pleasure to attend as a chair to this section in November 2020. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Carlo Cicciati from the University of L'Aquila in Italy to accept our invitation and attend to this webinar as a keynote speaker to share the knowledge, expertise, and experience. We are very fortunate and grateful to have the webinar with Professor Carlo in our 75th Distinguished Lecture Series. Prof. Carlo will deliver the lecture with entitled Analytical Method for Modulation of the Multilevel Converters today. It is a pleasure we have made collaboration with the University of L'Aquila by the Prof. Carlo and hopefully keep this collaboration in future. This section held by Faculty of Engineering under the great organization by Professor Datu, Engineer Dr. Mohamed Rafir, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering UTM. Without any delay, I would like to hand the section to Professor Mohamed to, to introduce the Prof. Kalu. Over to you, Prof. Mohamed. Thank you, Dr. Amir Reza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to our 75th UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. Today, uh, my name is Mohamed Rafiq and I am the Dean of Engineering uh, University Technology Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Carlo Cecati from University of L'Aquila, Italy. A bit about our distinguished speaker today. Carlo Cecati, who is an IEEE Fellow, received the Dr. the Engineer Wilson Huffman degree in electro electrotechnical engineering from the University of L'Aquila, Italy in 1983. Since then, he has been with the same university, becoming a full professor in 2006 and a rector's delegate from 20 2005 until 2013. From September 2015 until September 2017, he has been a Kenran Talents Professor, that is 1000 Talents Program Distinguished Professor with the Harbin Institute of Technology, China. He has been an invited professor in other universities, including Dayan Institute of Technology, China, and NC Paris, France. Prof. Chati's main research interests include power electronics, distributed generation, smart grids, and e-transportation. In these fields, he authored more than 200 journals and conference papers. He has been a co-editor-in-chief from 2010 to 2012, and the Editor-in-Chief from 2013 to 2015 of the IEEE Transactions on Industrial Electronics. In 2007, he has been a co-founder and CEO of DG Power SRL, a University of L'Aquila spin-off, and since 2012 has been its CTO. Prof. Chichati has been a co-recipient of the 2012 and 2013 Best Paper Award from the IEEE Transactions on Industrial Informatics, the 2012 Best Paper Award from the IEEE Industrial Electronics Magazine, and the 2019 Outstanding Paper Award from the IEEE Transactions on Industrial Electronics. In 2017, he received the Anthony J. Hornbrook Award for his contribution to the IEEE Industrial Electronics Society. Carlo Cicciati has been included in the highly cited researchers in 2018 list by Clarivate Analytics. He is a member of 2003 Group for Scientific Research. And last year, in 2019, Prof. Cicciati was awarded by the President of the Republic of Italy, Commendatore dell'Ordine al Merito della Repubblica Italiana, that is the Commander of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic, awarded to him for his meritorious service and achievements in the field. So that is a brief biography of our distinguished speaker. Here now is Professor Carlo, Carlo Cecciati from University of L'Aquila, Italy, with a talk entitled Analytical Method for Modulation of Multi-Level Converters. Professor Carlo Cecciati, over to you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, thank you, Professor Rahim, to invite me and Dr. Amireza to get me and to coordinate this uh, session. It is a very big pleasure to me to be a keynote speaker, a lecturer today uh, at the University of Malaysia. 
and <clears throat> my talk uh, is uh, on uh, uh, analytical methods uh, for uh, modulation of power converters. So uh, let me uh, start uh, introducing the topic. Uh, basically, uh, we are considering uh, multi-level converters. Uh, as for them, uh, we have developed a significant research activity in the field of modulation. Uh, <clears throat> multi-level converter is a emerging technology, even if it is not very new, because uh, first uh, power converters are dated at least uh, 40 years ago, but uh, um, they are becoming a mature technology. Among multi-level converter, we have uh, different uh, topology, uh, namely we have uh, neutral point clamped uh, converters, uh, flying capacitor and cascaded edge bridge converters. Uh, our research activity in my group uh, has been focused mostly on cascaded edge bridge uh, converter, which are uh, converter uh, which uh, uh, operate usually at the frequency uh, significantly lower than typical converter. One of the main advantages of multi-level converter is that uh, they can operate uh, at uh, high voltage, and this is the reason they were introduced uh, in industry to overcome the limit of uh, typical uh, power devices. Uh, another uh, feature of multi-level converters is that uh, they produce uh, waveforms which are closer to um, sinusoidal waveforms, but usually they operate uh, at uh, high frequency in the sense that uh, the modulation is uh, um, obtained modulating in PWM a signal which is uh, modulated uh, with, uh, um, a wave, uh, with a sinusoidal reference waveform. So uh, let's go ahead with this presentation. One of the merits of uh, the um, multilevel converter is also that uh, the switching losses of their uh, output uh, are lower because uh, the power devices operate at lower frequency or can operate at fundamental frequency. And this is one of the big advantages of the motivation of the use of multi-level converter in high power. Uh, and as a final uh, advantages of multi-level converter, uh, they have a, a limited harmonic content and uh, they can operate at medium voltage, as I said at the beginning. So, uh, if we operate uh, at uh, high uh, power, um, a typical choice uh, for uh, their modulation is uh, to use uh, uh, the approach which is called the selective harmonic elimination or <coughs> selective harmonic uh, mitigation. And they are very popular uh, because uh, from one side uh, they are modulation at low frequency uh, therefore, they limit uh, at minimum uh, power losses because uh, with um, fundamental frequency modulation, the switches are called to uh, switch at the frequency which are 50 Hz or close to 50 Hz. Um, but uh, in this way, um, we know that uh, the harmonic content is uh, very high because uh, the uh, load is supplied with a, a square wave thermo, uh, square wave uh, wafer. Uh, therefore, there is a significant amount uh, of research in the, uh, the, uh, this field aiming to uh, apply low frequency modulation but eliminating harmonics. And of course, it is very important to eliminate low order harmonics because uh, low order harmonics are those with, in which uh, there is high energy concentration. Therefore, if we are 
capable to eliminate low frequency harmonics, the efficiency of the whole system, uh, the converter and the uh, load, uh, increase their efficiency significantly. Therefore, there are many research in this area, and this uh, research can be divided into distinct uh, uh, <clears throat> option. One is uh, to eliminate harmonics, but uh, as uh, we will see, it is possible to eliminate only one or more harmonics. Uh, the other is to mitigate the harmonics, which means that uh, uh, no one uh, will be completely eliminated, but uh, all or a significant group of harmonics uh, will be reduced uh, to a uh, lower level, resulting a low THD, a uh, low total harmonic distortion. <clears throat> of course, one of uh, the uh, commitment is to maintain the fundamental voltage at desired level, because the main purpose of the inverter is to supply the load uh, close to uh, rated uh, um, voltage and frequency. So, uh, based on uh, frequency approach, we can consider uh, three distinct approaches. One is called the pulse width modulation. One is based on pulse modulation. So we have a selective harmonic elimination or uh, selective harmonic uh, mitigation with pulse width modulation. Uh, another is pulse amplitude modulation. Uh, in uh, pulse amplitude uh, modulation, we have the capability or the need to vary the amplitude of each pulse. While, of course, in the first, in the previous case, we will uh, uh, we will operate uh, on the uh, frequency of uh, the pulse uh, uh, applied to the uh, power devices. And other are pulse active with modulation, where we can vary the amplitude of uh, the um, of the voltage step uh, during modulation. So. Uh, now we start uh, considering uh, the uh, PWM technique. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that the, the time is uh, very running very fast, so it will be very fast. Uh, so first point is uh, consider the uh, selective harmonic elimination or mitigation of PWM. And we can say that in this case, uh, we consider the switching angle as the only degree, the unique degree of freedom. So for an assigned number of levels of the multi-level converter and a PWM algorithm, we consider uh, the higher number of angles uh, and we try to eliminate as much as possible uh, number of harmonics. But, uh, uh, increasing the frequency uh, of the modulation means that we increase the switching losses. So, uh, with PWM uh, selective harmonic mitigation or mitigation, we try to eliminate uh, some harmonics from uh, acting, operating on the PWM uh, on the PWM modulation. With uh, pulse amplitude modulation. In addition to pulse width modulation, we vary also the amplitude of the input side voltage, resulting an additional degree of freedom in the uh, modulation. So, uh, conventional equations are reformulated in such a way a constant switching angle is obtained for a wide modulation index range. And finally, with the pulse active width modulation, we have uh, a um, modulation with uh, equally spaced switching angles, but uh, with uh, unequal DC sources. This means that each uh, edge bridge of the cascaded edge bridge is supplied with a different 
amplitude with a different uh, amplitude of the voltage surge from one side and from the other side we calculate the time duration of the application of this modulation so we have again two degree of freedom but uh, in this way we can work at a very low frequency or a fundamental frequency as we did with our technique so uh, a result of this approach uh, will be to eliminate uh, all harmonics uh, elim uh, except those uh, uh, with this uh, uh, number. So we are able, as we will see at the end of this presentation, to eliminate all harmonics with n which is equal to 2k uh, plus uh, levels plus 1 where K is one, two, or three, we will see in the next slide. Uh, so <clears throat> let's go with uh, the application of, uh, with, with the, the definition of the equation. So uh, the algorithms require the solution of a, a, a system of transcendental equation, which is not easily to find analytically in the full uh, range of modulation index or operating point. Uh, therefore, there are several iterative techniques which have been proposed in literature, including Newton Rolson uh, sequential program, uh, quadratic programming, gradient optimization, theory of resultants. But all of these algorithms which have been uh, previously proposed in literature are burdensome and uh, their convergence. Uh, could be challenging with the increased number of variables. So if the number of, uh, um, of levels increase. <clears throat> I am going um, quite faster now. So for instance, in the literature, uh, we can find this method or a particle swarm optimization or, 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 or homopotent uh, method. All these methods uh, are um, based on a uh, offline computation, uh, so um, the uh, solution of the uh, transcendental equation is done offline, and then uh, there are some lookup tables which are implemented in the uh, real time system, and the system will uh, identify the right combination of uh, switching angles according to this lookup table, applying the uh, result uh, which has been computed offline in real time. So uh, let uh, us uh, to uh, show the basic uh, building block uh, uh, for our system. Uh, in this uh, slide, it is shown a five level uh, cascaded edge bridge. This is one phase and it consists of two edge bridge connected in series. Of course, if we have an L level uh, system, we have a, a higher number of edge bridge and uh, as probably uh, many of you know that uh, the number of edge bridge is uh, uh, corresponding uh, to uh, give rise uh, to uh, uh, 2L plus one levels. So for instance, in this case, we have two edge bridge, therefore two multiply two is four plus one is five this configuration leads to five levels. If we have, for instance, four, we have two multiplied four plus one is nine and so on. So, uh, <clears throat> first point is that uh, if we consider as we are doing a, a five level inverter, uh, we can consider the output voltage given by this equation. So the output voltage is equal to the this, uh, this uh, constant multiplied by the sum of cosine of alpha one, which is the switching angle for uh, edge bridge on, on top, and uh, alpha two is the switching angle for the uh, um, for the edge bridge at bottom. Of course, if we have a, a higher number of uh, edge bridges, uh, we have more uh, cosine uh, terms. Uh, n is the number of the harmonics and uh, then the DC voltage is uh, the uh, DC source applied to the uh, edge bridge. Uh, in this um, 
system, we consider that DC is equal for all edge bridges. Of course, the angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 are bounded within this interval. In order to eliminate uh, a generic odd harmonic, uh, we can write uh, this system and solve this so system. So we have to solve this system. Uh, <coughs> cosine uh, depends on alpha 1 and alpha 2 uh, multiplied for uh, k, which is the harmonic to be eliminated. So uh, in our case, we can consider any of the harmonics uh, from 3 to uh, n, uh, which is the odd harmonic. Uh, and m1 is the uh, modulation index uh, for the system. OK. Uh, so um, we can apply prostaferisi formula. And uh, we have these two equations where the angle theta 1 and theta 2 are respectively equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 divided 2 and alpha 1 minus alpha 2 divided 2, uh, with theta is uh, uh, bounded within 0 and pi uh, greco al, uh, al, 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 uh, for 90 degrees. So it has been demonstrated in one of our old papers, uh, this one, analytical method, analytical method for factor generation in five level cascade that uh, all valid modulation index returning the real solution in one uh, with D is uh, bounded in this uh, um, boundary is satisfy this uh, relationship. So the modulation index has to be bounded between uh, zero and one, which is common. Uh, big and one is equal to the equation. So uh, from previous equation with some simple modulation, uh, with some simple manipulation, we can find uh, these two values for theta 1 and theta 2, and uh, uh, where the angle R, uh, not uh, the, the index R, is an integer value belonging to this interval, uh, which ensures that uh, these two conditions are satisfied cosine of this angle has to be different from zero and bounded within uh, minus one and plus, plus one. From previous consideration follows that uh, the angles uh, uh, which are affected by the, uh, uh, the uh, desired uh, eliminating uh, harmonics are equal to these two expressions. So we have to implement this expression in our uh, system. And the uh, details uh, regarding this result uh, can be found on this paper, which has been published in 2017. Now we can consider not the case of uh, full harmonic elimination, but the case of selective harmonic elimination. So our scope is uh, to reduce uh, a group of uh, harmonics. So the, we need uh, to write a transcendental disequation system, which is this. Of course, we are still considering a five level inverter, and then we have to consider two angles. Uh, therefore, we have to write this system uh, where 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on are the harmonics. And then uh, we have to put some constraints, uh, which means that uh, this uh, equation uh, has to satisfy that the uh, index is below I3 and 5 and so on. Um, most of these uh, um, uh, com requirements are fixed with uh, some international standards like this. So, for instance, uh, <clears throat> we have to respect that for uh, harmonic as um, 5 the uh, voltage amplitude uh, has to be below uh, 6, for 7 below 5, and so on. 
so for uh, again a five level cascaded inverter uh, <clears throat> we can conceive Oh, okay, let's go ahead with uh, the case of a five-level inverter with unequal DC sources. So now we are uh, introducing, a, we are removing a constraints, so we are introducing power sources with a variable uh, output. So we are going to supply each separate edge bridge with a different voltage. So, uh, in this case, uh, we have V1, which is different from V2. Uh, again, the angles have to be included within the, um, the angle, this, uh, this, this boundary from 0 to 90 degrees. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, the equation becomes this. As you can see, we have introduced the term V1 and V2, which is the amplitude for the first edge bridge and for second end bridge in these two equations. In this case, uh, we have to write uh, uh, Chebyshev polynomials. So uh, we can consider um, the equation or this equation depending on the case we want to eliminate the harmonics or we can we want to eliminate the harmonics and then in this case we have to write this equation system so introducing the following Chebyshev or Chebyshev polynomial and using the Waring formula we obtain this set of equations uh, I will pre I prefer to remove the uh, highlight because uh, create problem. And uh, this equation must satisfy this constraint. So uh, S has to be the sum of the two x1 and x2, and P has to be the multiplication of P, uh, uh, x1 and x2 in this equation. Of course, if the number of level is higher than Five, then the number of uh, H-bridge is higher than two, this uh, system becomes much higher and these uh, two, uh, the system has to uh, satisfy the polynomial where S is equal to X1 plus X2 plus X3 and so on, and the P has to be the product of all X terms. So, uh, we can consider to eliminate the third harmonic, because the third harmonic is uh, the, the one which has the higher harmonic content. So, uh, we can fix these two equations. So, the uh, Chebyshev polynomial are, uh, this, uh, is given by these two uh, this equation, and then we have to solve these, uh, two, uh, the system with these two equations. And this uh, is uh, described in uh, the, this paper published in the conference in 2015. So, uh, going ahead with uh, this uh, case, uh, the system, after some mathematical manipulation, the system to be solved is represented by these two equations, where uh, the term B1 is given by the um, the division between the two voltage, the term uh, B0 is given by the division between the modulation index and the voltage applied to the second uh, H bridge, and the term A3 and 2 and A1 and 0 are given by this equation. All these equations are uh, closed and the results are exact um, results. So, one of the advantages of these uh, approaches is that uh, the equations are, um, as you can see, very simple to be implemented using a microprocessor or DSP, and that can be implemented in real time. So there is a significant complexity in terms of theoretical understanding of the method, but one uh, a, a researcher studied the equation and has understood how to apply them, they can be easily uh, implemented in real time because uh, their computational effort is very, very limited. 
so uh, the solution of uh, the previous system are three and uh, only one solution is valid uh, because uh, it has uh, to satisfy uh, this condition each component of the solution must belong to the interval 0 1 and x1 has to be x2 so uh, the switching angles are computed as alpha equal to arcosine x1 and alpha 2 is equal to arcosine x2 and then in this figure in the next figure uh, we have the uh, harvesting implicit form of the system 5 for k equal to 3 uh, in this slide the um, dashed line represent this function uh, and the continuous line represent this function uh, where the uh, modulation index varies between 0 and 99 the valid modulation uh, index uh, is identified bounded in this interval from this figure Okay, uh, let's go with another example, the elimination of the fifth harmonic. In the case of fifth harmonic, in addition to T1 and uh, T1 and T3, we have also the term T5, which is of course more complex than the previous Y, uh, because it is the fifth, so we have three terms. And uh, the following uh, polynomial is obtained. All these equations are computed analytically in real time. So, uh, making some algebraic manipulation, we reach this uh, equation uh, where this uh, term uh, five, uh, C5 is equal to this term, C4 is equal to this term, and so on. But the system appears complex, but all these uh, equations are determined uh, offline, but uh, in the real system we uh, implement this equation and these are fixed values, so uh, we can compute easily the equation. <clears throat> so here we have the boundary for uh, the case of uh, fifth harmonic elimination. Uh, let's go with the pulse amplitude uh, wide modulation. So in this case, uh, we have a new uh, modulation uh, which consists in uh, considering an inverter uh, with an edge bridge and each edge bridge has its own variable DC to so, for instance, in this figure, we have five edge bridge. Each one has its surface DC1, DC2, DC3, and DC4 and 5. So, the first step with this approach is to consider uh, a reference sinusoidal signal, which is the uh, frequency, the, the signal which should be generated with uh, the uh, inverter. So, uh, we make a choice of the switching angles according to this uh, formula where K is uh, a, um, a, a spacer term with the step alpha equal to the pi greco divided L the, where L is the number of uh, levels. Uh, and of course, uh, L is uh, in, the, uh, in the interval uh, zero uh, 90, uh, 90 degrees. So this is angle, this is alpha, and this is the DC voltage. So as you can see, in the case of five um, distinct uh, edge bridge, uh, we have divided the the, um, the 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 angles in five parts, in five um, element uh, um, segments. Each one is equispaced by the other. So this is uh, three uh, Rico, this is five, seven, and so on. Uh, the waveform, uh, in the waveform V0, the S level are called the plus and 
plus minus E1, E2, and e, uh, ES, and are identified according to this equation, where the uh, value is equal to the uh, V max multiplied for uh, sinus Ka, where K is equal to the number of sources, uh, is a variable which varies up to the number of sources. And Vm is the peak value of uh, the uh, voltage. So the amplitude of each DC sources are given by the difference between the uh, applied voltage in the previous and the second case. And this is the previous equation, uh, the previous figure. Uh, I see that we are going uh, not very fast. So with this assumption, uh, applying a series uh, expression, the amplitude of the uh, amp harmonic is given by this equation. And as uh, uh, V0 is an odd function, all either harmonics are absent from uh, the uh, output. And uh, we can say that this equation is valid only for odd harmonics. The amplitude of the first harmonic must be set to the modulation index of the value. Rearrange this previous equation, we have this equation, and then applying prostaferesi and substituting the term AK for each uh, H-bridge with uh, equation 10, after some manipulation, we get this output voltage, which depends on the cosine of the difference between the number uh, n and 1 uh, multiplied uh, for uh, k alpha. And there is a theorem which has been demonstrated saying that uh, the sum of the difference between these two uh, cosines is equal to zero for all odd harmonic uh, uh, um, all harmonic terms, uh, where n is different from 2 kL plus 1. So, uh, we have to introduce a, a function f uh, l uh, depending on h, where h is equal to n plus or minus 1. So, this is the equation and then uh, making some computation, we obtain this equation. So uh, we can verify from uh, this computation that uh, all harmonics are eliminated except the one which number 90, uh, 21, 23, 43, and uh, 45. All others are eliminate and this has been uh, demonstrated uh, with a uh, demonstration so now we uh, consider uh, we started uh, this uh, description considering uh, uh, 11 level with five uh, edge bridge so we have to consider uh, the which angles uh, with the, the variation of the modulation index so here uh, you can see the angles uh, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, and theta uh, 5, considering uh, the variation of uh, n in the um, x axis. While uh, the DC voltage uh, with the variation of the modulation index is represented in this figure. So, we have to apply this voltage to the various uh, H bridge uh, according to the modulation index. Of course, uh, the uh, H bridge, which is at the bottom of uh, the system, is uh, the one with uh, the highest voltage. And uh, we, con we can consider the voltage according to this uh, graph. Uh, in, in function of the uh, modulation index. So, for instance, with modulation index n, we have this uh, value, this is uh, VU DC1, this is VU DC2, and so on. Uh, if we increase the modulation index, the voltage increases, of course. 
and these are some results. So, if we consider a L level with L equal to uh, 5, we obtain this uh, total harmonic, uh, this spectrum. Uh, therefore, applying the previous method, uh, until now I have did the, the uh, I considered the, the number of H bridge 5 and the number of level 5. Now I am considering this algorithm applied to a five level inverter, then a system with a two voltage sources. And then you can see that with uh, five level, we have, uh, this is the fundamental harmonic. We have uh, eliminated uh, the third, the fifth and the seventh. We have the ninth, which is 11%, the 11th, which is 9%. Uh, then we have eliminated the 13, 15, and 17. Then we have uh, these with 5%, and so on. Uh, in case of a three edge, in case of three edge bridge, therefore a seven level uh, inverter, we have eliminated uh, also the uh, 11th. As you can see here, we have the 9th and the 11th. So adding the two. Uh, uh, one additional uh, edge bridge, then uh, including two uh, additional levels, we have eliminated uh, these two harmonics. And uh, uh, also the values of uh, the uh, harmonic which remains are modified, of course. But as you can see, the number of harmonics present has decreased. If we uh, use a five, uh, four uh, H bridge, uh, so a nine level, we have eliminated all harmonics until 17, and the values of the 17 and the 19 are in the range of uh, 6 percent. Uh, then we have eliminated all these harmonics, and then we have again uh, 35 and 37. If we consider the uh, 11 level inverter as in, uh, considered in the description we have eliminated all harmonics until 19 and the values of 21 and 23 are below five percent in the case of, of 13 uh, levels we have eliminated all 23 first harmonics and the first harmonics are uh, 25 and 27 and then we do not have any other until uh, 14. I remember all of you that 14 is uh, the uh, highest harmonic uh, considered uh, for calculating THD according to grid code. In the case of 15 level, we shifted from 25, 27 to uh, 29 and 20, uh, 31. So basically, increasing the number of levels eliminate more harmonics and reduce the amplitude of the harmonics. Of course, we have to find a trade-off between the uh, uh, we have to uh, be between the number of H bridge and the quality of the output waveform. So uh, we can make some. Uh, comparison. Uh, first point uh, is that uh, uh, these uh, modulations do not uh, eliminate the harmonics uh, which uh, value is uh, 2 L K plus 1 uh, where uh, L is the number of levels and K is the number 1, 2 and so on. Uh, while the procedure described in this paper do not eliminate uh, these harmonics. So, our uh, procedure eliminates uh, more harmonics than uh, the method described in this paper, which has uh, been published in 2018. Uh, other uh, comparison, other evaluation are that uh, if uh, we consider one switching transition for each level, uh, we obtain identical switching frequency with the uh, phase, uh, with the um, selective harmonic elimination and selective harmonic mitigation. 
So basically the conventional uh, harmonic elimination method eliminate a total number of L uh, minus three divided two where L is the number of levels uh, harmonics uh, while the conventional uh, pulse amplitude eliminate uh, modulation eliminates only the L minus two harmonics where L is the number of levels. So for instance, if we have an L is equal to nine, we eliminate the seven harmonic only. This is a mathematical exercise that uh, we can consider until 301 uh, uh, harmonic. So let uh, us to make uh, some comparison between uh, these two techniques. This is a, a pulse amplitude with modulation applied to a single phase uh, inverter. And this is the same uh, methodology applied to a uh, three phase system. Of course, uh, the number of deleted harmonics uh, is better with uh, the three phase system. And uh, the number of deleted harmonics is much higher than using a conventional pulse amplitude modulation or a conventional uh, P pulse width modulation. the percent of this is the standard formula of the thd uh, we can say that uh, with our proposed algorithm uh, which has been described a few minutes ago the uh, number the total harmonic distortion is better than uh, using the algorithm proposed in paper uh, number five um, and uh, there is a convert, uh, convergence when the number of levels increase. Uh, this means that uh, our algorithm works uh, much better with uh, simpler uh, power uh, converters with a uh, uh, lower number of uh, edge bridge. And uh, if we consider our um, modulation, uh, our uh, pulse amplitude with modulation, uh, we have uh, the output voltage uh, THD, which is around 11% for a fifth five level inverter. So uh, with a simple uh, two edge bridge configuration. And uh, um, the uh, output voltage is much better than using a, a selective harmonic elimination based on PWM. Uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, the selective harmonic elimination, which looks uh, better than this. But uh, um, if we consider the uh, output voltage of uh, the, um, the total harmonic of the she palm and the palm, we can see that uh, we have uh, uh, for five level is better PAM, but uh, for seven level is better hour and so on. And this is with other modulation. I am saying that uh, we are running very fast. Uh, therefore, we have to go to conclusion. Uh, these are some other comparison uh, among uh, different uh, modulation uh, algorithms. And this is a slide showing one of our experimental setup. This is the first test performance in our lab. Almost all this activity has been carried out in DigiPower. DigiPower is a spin you know, is previous, previously was founded as spin you know, now it is an independent company from the University of L'Aquila. Uh, each of these uh, is a edge bridge. Uh, each edge bridge is uh, rated about uh, 20 kilowatt. In this case, uh, we have a four edge bridge, so this is a nine level inverter. And uh, this, uh, this is a FPGA board. These are the power supply which supplies this four edge bridge. This is uh, the output voltage and current with this configuration. Uh, the load is represented by this uh, uh, resistance in this, uh, uh, this um, 
part of the figure. So uh, let's go with some experimental result. This is uh, the output voltage and the output current on a, a, resist, a resistive load with a five level inverter uh, <coughs> with a, a pump. As you can see, the amplitude of this voltage is lower than the amplitude of the uh, bottom level uh, edge bridge. And this is the experimental um, total harmonic, the measured that, um, total harmonic distortion. The eliminated harmonic are the same as uh, found uh, theoretically, and these are the uh, real values of the uh, harmonic which remain. This is uh, a, a total harmonic distortion in the case of seven level inverter. And as you can see, we have eliminated the, the harmonics according to the two uh, previous uh, description. Here, the, we have the nine level uh, modulation. This is the experimental result. This is 11 harmonic. And this uh, is uh, a, a, a um, table summarizing uh, the total harmonic distortion versus the DC voltage link uh, disturbance. I think that uh, I have to close uh, my presentation because uh, we have just 10 minutes for questions. So these are some transient uh, uh, operation of the inverter, or the, the output DC voltage. And uh, this is uh, the uh, transient condition at the variation of the modulation index. So as you can see, the voltage uh, changes from one value to another. This is the nine level case. And this is the output uh, current. So as a conclusion, uh, we have considered uh, some uh, modulation techniques uh, for multilevel converters. Uh, these uh, techniques are analytical. Analytical means that uh, the equation are uh, polynomials which can be easily implemented uh, in using a DSP or an FPGA. Uh, and uh, they can be computed uh, very quickly, therefore can be implemented in, in real time. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, considering uh, uh, these uh, techniques, uh, we can eliminate uh, some harmonics or we can uh, mitigate uh, a higher number of harmonics, uh, reducing the total harmonic distortion. But if we introduce um, variable amplitude uh, DC supplies to the H bridge, uh, we can increase uh, performance significantly. Uh, reducing uh, or eliminating uh, from one side, eliminating uh, a significant number of harmonics, uh, and from the other side, uh, reducing the amplitude of the harmonics which remain uh, in the um, in the in the output. Uh, of course, uh, uh, if the number of levels and then the number of edge bridge increase, the situation is better and better and better. But of course, we have to make a trade-off between the complexity and cost from one side and performance. Uh, just as final remark, I can say that uh, these systems are uh, mostly conceived for a high voltage application uh, in the range of medium voltage, uh, so some kilovolts. Uh, therefore, uh, it is a good option to consider high number of levels because we can uh, realize the power converter using uh, standard uh, IGBT. Uh, I mean that uh, using uh, IGBT so working at 600 volt or uh, 1.2 kilovolt at most, we can realize uh, converters with high number of levels operating at uh, voltage up to uh, 11 kilovolt or even more as in our lab. And then uh, with very cheap uh, converters and uh, very easily re re replaceable um, components converter, 
we can obtain uh, high voltage, high power, and uh, eliminate at the same time a significant number of harmonics. Uh, and this means that we can eliminate uh, uh, the power, uh, the, the output uh, uh, passive filter, and then reduce uh, the cost of the converter. So I stop my presentation and I leave you five minutes for a discussion. So thank you so much, Professor Cicciati, for your amazing and informative lecture and very interesting talk because it was so related uh, with my study. Uh, let me inform all audience from Malaysia and around the world, you are welcome to post any relevant question here. Uh, if you have any question, you can post uh, it to Prof. Carlo. Prof. Carlo will read the question from Facebook comments. So uh, to kick us our question answer section, I begin one question from me first. Uh, Prof, actually in a few years uh, ago, I worked on the control method of the active power filter to remove the harmonic uh, at the PCC. Uh, and after that, try to improve the control method of the grid connected inverter, which is used in the microgrid. And also we show uh, the harmonic has been removed after improve it. Uh, my main question is, uh, which uh, one is better? Focus on the control method, to if the control method uh, at, the, at the IT power filter or green character inverter at the microgrid. Because both systems, you use the nonlinear load and the nonlinear load try to inject the harmony to the system. And we show uh, after uh, connected the nonlinear load to the system, uh, the THT was uh, around 30%. Uh, so uh, according to the IEEE standard, uh, this uh, should be go less than 5%, right? So I want mm -hmm. to know, uh, focus better on the active power filter control method, like the active power filter or no, uh, uh, grid connected inverter or the converter at the micro grid. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said at the last uh, part of my presentation, last minute, uh, I think that uh, uh, now, we can easily uh, realize uh, converters with high number of levels and then implement uh, such kind of uh, algorithms uh, with a high um, number of levels and uh, very uh, large harmonic elimination. Um, so um, in our lab, I did not show in this slide because of time limitation and uh, probably uh, I was not very uh, clear because of time limitation, but we have realized a system with a 33 level, uh, which is capable to work at 11 kilovolts. Uh, in this case, applying using this converter, uh, we applying this uh, um, method, uh, we can uh, reduce. Uh, uh, my, my opinion is that we should use. Uh, um, selective harmonic elimination algorithm, so we can reduce the total harmonic distortion to very low values. And we have found in the lab that uh, from 17 uh, number, uh, levels uh, and applying the pulse amplitude uh, modulation algorithm, we eliminate all harmonic obtaining uh, 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 total harmonic distortion below 1% with the seven team level, so with eight H bridge in series for each phase. This means that the system is not simple, but it's not very complex. And using uh, 1.7 uh, kilovolt uh, uh, IGBT, we can obtain voltage in the range of uh, six uh, kilovolt or even more. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, on the counterpart, uh, this uh, um, modulation requires uh, voltage amplitude uh, variation. Then uh, the uh, converter has uh, some additional complexity. Uh, but uh, uh, recently uh, we are um, writing, we have found a new uh, methodology. We have to test it uh, where uh, we can uh, Act uh, on the uh, angle, changing the angle, maintaining fixed uh, frequency, uh, fixed amplitude, and obtaining the similar uh, results. Uh, one uh, observation is that uh, these uh, algorithms uh, with uh, low frequency are very good uh, for grid uh, 
not for instance for drives because in drives uh, so for supplying motors uh, we need a high uh, dynamic performance and these systems are considered to apply the uh, sinusoidal waveform and then uh, you have to move from one frequency to another uh, with a uh, low speed uh, so for um, for this they are working very well even with the nonlinear loads because uh, we are able to apply a new waveform every uh, 20 milliseconds. So uh, the system uh, is uh, uh, based on a feedback uh, control. Uh, when identify some harmonic, uh, can eliminate uh, the following step. So in one step, uh, in 20 milliseconds, uh, the harmonic is eliminated. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, I think we have the question in Facebook. Uh, can you read the question, Prof? By um, if you give me the, 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 the address, uh, the, I can read, yes. But, ah, uh, this is the question, okay. So, uh, inverter efficiency. Uh, I think that uh, not exactly 100%, but very close, because we should consider that uh, we are operating at fundamental frequency. Therefore, each device uh, is operating uh, with a very, with a two switch uh, every 10 milliseconds. Therefore, we can completely forget uh, switching uh, uh, losses. This is one point. Another point is that uh, uh, if uh, we work uh, with uh, this approach, uh, the switch uh, have uh, low voltage. So, for instance, if uh, we consider a, a 400 volt uh, uh, inverter, we can use uh, uh, components, uh, in particular MOSFET, uh, in the range of 100 volt or even less. So, if you look to specification of 100 volt uh, MOSFET, you can see that uh, its uh, current is uh, over 500 ampere. Uh, therefore, using a multi-level converter, we can reach uh, uh, high power levels uh, over 100 kilowatt from one side. Uh, from the other side, these uh, high current low voltage uh, MOSFET uh, have uh, the uh, conduction, loss, uh, conduction uh, resistance which is in the range of some milliohm, and in some cases below one milliohm. There are some MOSFET uh, below 100 volt, which have uh, the resistance, the conduction losses, the conduction resistance, which is below uh, one milliohm. Therefore, even the conduction losses are very, very low. So the efficiency is, can be very, very close to 100%. Thank you so much. I hope, I hope Prof uh, uh, in the future can get it the 100% efficiency uh, for the inverter. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you so much, Prof. I think you have uh, limited time. Uh, we have to finish this lecture. If, uh, if the viewer have more questions, can just email later. Uh, and thank you again. Now I pass to Prof Rafir for the closing remark. I, over to you, Prof Rafir. Thank you, Dr. Amireza, for moderating the session, and thank you for introducing Prof. Carlo Cecchati to me. And to our distinguished speaker today, Professor Carlo Cecchati, thank you so very much for accepting our invitation, and thank you for the great sharing. It is indeed a great honor to have you in our program. And to all our viewers worldwide, thank you for watching. We have uh, close to 200 viewers for this particular session, so it is certainly a great session. Uh, thank you for watching. Do stay tuned. We have many more interesting lectures for you. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Rafik and uh, Dr. Uh, Amireza. Um, it has been a pleasure for me to take this uh, lecture. And I hope that it has been sufficiently clear. But uh, on the other side, uh, to explain a huge amount of uh, formula in uh, 50 minutes uh, is not simple. Uh, from my side, I am available to uh, reply to all questions which came uh, to me, uh, to my email address, or maybe I will ask uh, how to access to Facebook uh, page. 
so I am available to uh, respond after this uh, lecture. And I'm available to next uh, lecture if uh, considered useful for your audience. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.